Lesson 7.4b, using conversion factors to convert between measurement systems. We learned in video 7.3c that we can convert measurement units by using a conversion factor. A conversion factor is a ratio of two equivalent measurements. Since the two measurements in a conversion factor are equivalent, a conversion factor is equal to one. So a conversion factor is a ratio of two equivalent measurements that is equal to one. If one inch is equal to two and 5400 centimeters, the conversion factor for inches to centimeters, we're going two centimeters, would be two, two and 5400 centimeters over one as the from. The from is the denominator. For a conversion factor for centimeters to inches, we're going from centimeters to inches. So now the centimeters is the denominator. A bakery purchased 27 and 24 hundredths kilograms of apples to make pies and tarts. How many pounds of apples did they buy? Now think, we need to go from kilograms to pounds. So this is going to be our from as the denominator and our two is going to be the numerator. We see from our table that one pound is equal to 454 thousandths of a kilogram. So here we have our two and our from. This is our conversion factor as a ratio and we're going to multiply this conversion factor by the 27.24 kilograms. And we can think of multiplying straight across if we write this over a one, and that's gonna give us 27.24 over 0 0.454, and we can use division. We can do 27 and 24 hundredths divided by 454 thousandths. For long division, remember we learned we've got a decimal point here. We need to move it over one, two, three jumps. So we're going to move this one over one, two, three jumps, and we're going to put a zero here as a placeholder. And we think how many times can 454 fit into 27,240? We can do a little multiplication on the side, and we see that if we multiply the 454 by 6, we're going to get 2724. Then it'll be this zero's turn to drop down. 454 fits into zero, zero times. We get a 60. We know it's 60 pounds of apples, approximately. Because this is an approximation, we have approximately 60 pounds. Now, this lesson is about using conversion factors. That's why we solved it the way we did. But we can also use division right away to solve the problem by finding how many times we can fit this point 454 into 27.24 and just do division. We find it fits in 60 times. We know there's 60 pounds of apples. If this is equal to one pound or approximately one pound, and we're trying to figure out how many pounds are in this amount, we can just find how many times this amount fits into this one, and that'll give us the pounds. A recipe calls for 170 and 4 tenths grams of sugar. How many ounces is this? So we think we need to go from grams to ounces. So we're going to go from grams to ounces. So we have one ounce over 28.4 grams as our conversion factor as a ratio. We're going to multiply it by the 170.4 grams of sugar. If we write this over a 1, we're going to have 170 and 4 tenths over 28 and 4 tenths. And we can solve this with division. We have to move this decimal point over 1, so we're going to have to move this one over 1. We see how many times 284 can fit into 1,000, 
704n. We try multiplying it by 4, and eh, that's not enough. We try multiplying it by 5, and no, that's not enough either. When we try multiplying the 284 times 6, we see that it is equal to 1,704. So we know it's about 6 ounces. We have an approximation symbol, so we know it's approximately 6 ounces. A container of mustard is 10 and 5 tenths ounces. How many grams is this? We think we need to go from ounces to grams. And one ounce is approximately 28 and 4 tenths grams. We're going from ounces to grams. So now we have a 1 as a denominator. And as we've learned in the previous lessons, we can cancel the common unit. So we're going to cross off ounce, cross off ounce, and we're left with 28 and 4 tenths times 10 and 5 tenths. And we can just multiply this. We have 1, 2 jumps in the equation, so we're going to have 1, 2 jumps in our product. We get approximately 298 and 2 tenths grams. We're finished with this second lesson. We're going to move on to the last part of 7.4, and we're going to be using proportions to convert measurements. I'm proud of you. Keep trying, and I'll see you next time. Bye.